Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah and today I'll be taking you through your class. So today's class has been designed um, around a mandala flow. So it's a circular flow. So um, basically you start at the top of the mat and you work your way around to the back and you come back again and then you work back the other way. So I really enjoy a mandala flow for students because I feel like it incorporates um, energy, focus and a bit of balance. Um, but also from a perspective of um, looking at perception. So within yoga, we tend to face the front of the mat um, predominantly in most of our classes. And um, so by coming towards the back of the mat and facing the back of the mat and working our way round, um, it's a different perception of our movement and of our class that day. Um, also within mandala flow, um, coming back to that circular kind of aspect, um, it talks about wholeness, so it talks about completion. So a circle is obviously complete, so it's completely round and spherical in shape. So it's about wholeness and it's about um, coming back to a starting point or a finishing point. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this flow. And yeah, today we're going to begin our practice on our backs in Supta Bhavakanasana, which is reclined butterfly pose. Maybe having some props, if you're at home, a cushion um, or a, a big sofa pillow, um, or if you have blocks and bolsters, um, having those close by as well. Um, yeah, so coming to find our way onto the mat. Um, as always, within your practice as well, please feel free to take what you want to do today and leave what you don't. So if anything doesn't feel right for you or there's any discomfort in certain poses, just backing out of that pose, coming maybe to find yourself in a child's pose or... Seated over the heels, coming to find um, just, a, just a moment for yourself. Beautiful. So we've sipped up about a Kanasana. We're going to start by bringing the soles of the feet together first. So we're creating like a diamond shape with the legs. And you might make this diamond shape really long. So the toes might be coming closer towards the body for a smaller diamond or away from the body for a longer, kind of more narrow diamond. And then we're bringing the hands beside the body. Maybe you shuffle the hips a little bit forward if you're like me and too close towards the top of the mat. And then coming to lower yourself down. So we're bringing the back down to the mat. And allowing the knees to fall out to the sides towards the ground. Still keeping that nice firm feeling of the feet meeting, the bases of the feet meeting. And maybe the hands are on the body or away from the body. And just noticing how you've come to set up in your Supta Bhattakanasana. And if this feels right for you. And if it doesn't, adjusting. Maybe taking that feet away from you or bringing them in closer. Maybe taking something underneath the knees. So if you do have blocks or something that resembles this, then they can help prop the knees up if they're hanging in space and causing a little bit of discomfort for you. But not necessarily is discomfort always a bad thing either. Um, so we can come to find our, our range, so our edge, within a reclined posture like this. And if there's discomfort there, just making that adjustment, but not necessarily is there stress, when there's stress on the body, is that particularly a bad thing? We need stress in the body. And by stress, I mean we need some sort of form of tension through the body when we are moving through our asanas. But what you want to pay close attention to is if there's any pain, any burning, any tingling, electrical feelings, then back out and come to find what feels like your edge, what feels like a comfortable level of tension. And then coming to maybe close down the eyes if you haven't taken that option already, or maybe taking a soft gaze if closing down the eyes is not there for you. And then start to become aware of your natural rhythm of your breath. Start to follow the inhale and the exhale with your mind. I'm not forcing anything or trying to change anything with the breath. We are observing the breath coming in and out. And then 
start to maybe attach, if you haven't already, a word maybe to the inhale and exhale. So as you inhale, you are maybe attaching the word inhale. And as you exhale, you're attaching the word exhale. Or maybe those words are in and out. Or maybe there's no words at all. And using words to help you stay focused on the breath. Knowing if the mind wanders, this is perfectly natural, just gently and slowly guiding your mind back towards the breath, back to the focus of the breath. And then next, maybe you're either staying with this process, or maybe you're bringing awareness to where the breath is in the body. Maybe you use the hands to place the hand may be on the stomach or the chest. To feel for the feedback, to see where it might be predominantly in the body. Are you breathing more into the stomach or more into the chest? And try not to attach any judgment to this. There is no right or there is no wrong. Maybe you start to notice that it is more in one place than the other. And then as you notice that, maybe you start to notice that the other place that is less in there, there's still breath there also. you feel ready if you've taken the option of placing the hands on the body coming to place them back down beside you and allowing your natural rhythm of breath to come into place so we're letting go of any full process around the breath in terms of inhale and exhale and we're just allowing a natural rhythm of our breath to come in And then on the next breath, we're going to extend the right leg long and extend the left leg long. Maybe you take a couple of wiggles and jiggles and shakes out through the legs just to release through the hips after they've been in our reclined butterfly for a few moments. And then if you've closed down the eyes, coming to open up the eyes nice and gently. And then on your next breath, coming to plant the feet so they're firmly on the mat, the knees are bent. And then we're going to bring the right knee in towards the chest, and then the left knee in towards the chest. Maybe interlacing the fingers around the front of the shins. And giving the knees a little squeeze towards the body. Or maybe the hands are just on the kneecap. And then you might like to stay here with this motion of squeezing the body towards the chest and knees towards the chest. Or maybe you like to take both hands, both hands on each knee and take some circles out with the knees. So we're bringing the knees out towards the side, away from the body, so straightening the arms and then bring them back towards the body, circling them out towards the side. And taking some rotations through the hip sockets. And then if you've taken that option, ensuring that you go back the other way. And giving the opposite side of the body the same love that we're giving the first side. Perfect. And then coming to find that stillness one more time. And then we're going to keep the right leg tucked in. So maybe taking your fingers and interlacing them around the front of the right shin. And extending that left leg long down the mat and then taking your right hand your your left hand into your right knee sorry and we're going to extend your right arm out towards the side as we then scoot the hips just a tad over towards the right edge of the mat and then we're taking the right leg across your left side of your body for a supine spinal twist so the knee is coming over towards the left side 
maintaining the lower back down towards the mat. So if that means that you your upper body is off of the mat, maybe you might have gone a little bit too far. So coming back out of that pose, finding that edge. And maybe you want to find stillness here or maybe you're working the knee in and out, nice and slow movements. Maybe the gaze is up towards the ceiling or maybe it's down the right palm. And then on the next breath, come to come back through center, squaring the hips back off, giving the right knee a little squeeze in towards the body. And then bringing the right knee back in, giving the knees both a little squeeze together before sending the right leg down the mat, nice and long. Coming to squeeze the left leg in towards the chest, in towards the body. And then taking the left knee into the right hand, scooting your hips a little bit over towards the left side of the mat, as we then come to bring the left knee over towards the right edge of the mat. For a supine spinal twist, the left arm is extending out long. Maybe the gaze is up towards the ceiling or down the left hand. Once again, taking your option here, finding that stillness or some movement in and out from this pose. Listening to your body and honouring what it needs here today on the mat. And then on your next breath, bringing the knee back through center, maybe bringing both knees back in for a little, little squeeze to the body one last time. And then we're going to find our way up into a tabletop. So just coming up however you feel, that might be that you roll off to one side and you come up. But if you'd like a little massage through the spine, maybe bringing the hands behind the backs of the knees, rocking and rolling up and down the spine as you come up to sit on the sit bones. Then we're turning round, coming over to find the tabletop. So the hands are coming underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips or thereabouts. I'm spreading, the spreading the fingers here, palms are firmly planted down towards the mat. And the gaze is down towards the mat, creating length through the neck and through the spine. And then on your next breath, we're lowering the stomach down towards the mat. The tailbone might lift up towards the ceiling and the chest might come through ever so slightly as the gaze comes towards the top of the mat for your cow pose. And then reversing this motion, so lifting your spine up towards the ceiling, tailbone comes down towards the mat as the chin tucks towards the chest for your cat pose. And then coming back into a tabletop. Sending the hips back, coming to find a child's pose. Maybe the head is floating between the arms or maybe the forehead comes to touch the mat. Coming back into tabletop and then moving between your cow and your cat pose again. Taking that round of movement and then coming back to child's pose. And then moving here, so between cat, cow and child's pose. And taking that movement however fast or slow you want to go and whatever your body's calling for today maybe you want something a bit more subtle maybe you want something that's a little bit more energizing using the breath with the movement coming to incorporate the breath so you're moving with the breath also Then taking one more round in your own time of cat cow to child's pose and then we're going to meet in a neutral tabletop. Perfect. And when you found your way into your tabletop, taking the hands a handprint out ahead of you. And then coming to lower the chest, lower the stomach, all the way down to the mat. And we're extending the right and left arm out towards the side, 
So for, to begin with, the forehead might be placed on the mat. And then coming to bend the right elbow so it's in a cactus pose. And then coming to turn the head towards the right side so the, the left ear is on the mat. And then bring the awareness into the right leg. We're going to bend the right knee so it's coming up towards the right elbow. So we've got like a cactus form shape going on the right side. So right knee to right elbow. Not necessarily will it meet. I'm just staying here for two rounds of breath. And then coming to straighten the right arm back out and we're extending that right leg back towards straight behind us. Coming to turn to the left side, so we're sending the left gaze, that gaze over towards the left side, sorry. Bending that left arm into a cactus, so the right ear is towards the mat. Bringing the awareness into the left leg and then we're bending the knee and we're coming to find a rough 90 degree angle with that leg. So it's bringing the knee towards the elbow. And taking one more round of breath here. And then coming to straighten that left arm, sending the left hand, our leg behind us, coming to place the hands beside the rib cage as we push back up into our tabletop. And if the hands aren't a handprint ahead of the shoulders, taking them there, coming to tuck the toes underneath, sending a little bit of power back towards the toes, so we're sending the hips back ever so slightly. Once you find that power, hovering the knees for a moment before lifting your hips up and back for downward facing dog. Taking a moment here to feel your foundation in your downward facing dog. Maybe that's pedaling out the feet. Maybe that's coming to experiment with wider feet, wider hands or more of a narrow stance on the feet and the hands. And within this pose, we're creating length through the spine. So if that means incorporating a nice bend in the knees, as we're sending the sit bones up towards the ceiling. The heels don't necessarily have to touch the floor. They might not be able to touch the floor. And then on your next breath, coming to tiptoe our way towards the top of the mat, coming to find your version of your forward fold. So either that might be elbows towards the knees, maybe hands to props, fingertips or maybe palms towards the floor. Once again, inviting in that generous bend in the knees, so we want the chest towards the thighs. Allowing the head and the neck to be heavy here. And really firming down, grabbing down through those feet. And then on your next breath, we're gonna come up to rise, but vertebrae by vertebrae, just nice and slowly. Really ragdoll the arms, allowing them to be really heavy here. As we roll up slowly and gently. The chin will be the last thing to come up. And then taking the arms out wide, circling them round you as you bring the palms maybe to meet. And they draw down through heart center for Tadasana pose. Bringing the hands beside you. Lovely, just taking a moment here. Feeling the foundations beneath you. We firm and down through the feet, feeling the ground into the heel, into the big toe, into the little toe. Maybe you even take some rocks backwards and forwards, very slightly, side to side, before coming back to find your center. Noticing if there's anything different between when you first came to this stand and when you took the forward and back side to side movement. And then on your next breath, bring in the hands above the head, palms might meet. And as they draw down through heart center, we're bending the knees, you're folding over the tops of the thighs. Coming to find your halfway lift, so bringing the fingertips towards the shins. Flat back, we're energetically sending the sit bones towards the back of the room. Gaze is down towards the mat. Coming to fold forward, framing your feet, stepping the right foot back and then the left foot. 
coming to gently place the knees down to the mat as we then guide the chest, the body, all the way down. Untucking the toes, extending the legs so that we might extend the right leg long first and then the left leg to find some length. Hands are beside the body. And then on your next breath, pushing down, firming down through the tops of the feet to find some engagement through the legs as we then, on the next breath, lift the head, lift the chest for baby cobra. And coming back down. And on your next breath, coming up through tabletop, coming to tuck the toes, lifting your hips up and back for your downward facing dog. Taking a moment here, taking a round of breath, a round of inhale, a round of exhale. And then coming to find your way to the top of the mat one more time for forward fold, whatever version is calling to you. Before really grounding down through the feet, really firming down, coming up to right, circling the arms out nice and wide, palms might meet as they draw back down through heart centre. Finding yourself with the hands beside the body for Tadasana, for mountain pose. And then maybe closing down the eyes. And bringing some interoception into the body. Just noticing maybe the heart rate, the breath. Has it changed at all? Or has it stayed the same? And we're just observing, we're not judging. And coming to be familiar with the way that our body changes as we move. Inviting in awareness to the body. So we're going to work our way through a um, sun salutation A one more time like we just did then. Um, but we're going to incorporate a little bit of a different variation this time. So we're going to do um, sun salutation A but with a chair pose and a little bit of a balance part of work there so once again take what you want to do and leave what you don't today um, everything is always optional um, you don't always have to do it and um, yeah so let's get started so come in to find your way into your Tadasana and then we're sending the hands out in front so that they're parallel um, to the body roughly and the palms are facing each other or maybe they're down whatever feels right for you then we're taking a little bend in the knees and we're coming to find our chair so imagining there is a chair behind you so the knees can be together, toes can be touching, or they can be separate. And just taking a moment of breath here. And then we're coming to bring the hands to heart centre, folding over the tops of the thighs. Coming to find your halfway lift. Coming to frame the feet, step the right foot back and the left foot. Lowering the knees down towards the mat as we then untuck the toes lower the chest, the body, the torso, all the way down, forehead, mat, touch the mat, extend the right leg, left leg long to find some length, arms are beside the body, firming down through the tops of the thighs as we, on our next breath, lift the chest, lift the head, gaze is softly down in front of us, maybe here for a moment if you want some extra challenge, you even float the hands for a breath, and then coming to place the forehead, chest back down towards the mat, palms are on the mat, as we then push into the hands, lift the chest, lift the body, coming to tuck the toes, lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Mm, lovely, just taking a moment here. And then coming to walk towards the top of the mat when you are ready. In our forward fold, and then coming to send the hands behind you, the arms behind you. And as you do so, we're going to then bend the hips, coming to find our chair as the hands then come out in front of us. So they're sweeping behind us and then towards the front of the room. Finding that chair, finding your breath. Finding that balance, that energy in this pose. And then coming up to stand. And as you come up to stand, drawing the hands through heart centre. And bringing the hands beside the body. And then just taking a pause here. And notice how that round might have differed to the first round of Sun Salutation A. How that variation maybe brought in a change in the breath or a change in the body temperature. 
or maybe there is nothing to notice. And then coming to bring the hands over the head, palms might meet as they draw down through heart centre, we bend over the tops of the thighs, coming to find a forward fold. Bringing the hands towards the shins, nice flat back gazes down towards the mat, legs are straight, finding our um, halfway lift. And then coming to frame the feet, stepping the right foot back, stepping the left foot, finding ourselves into plank, slightly bending the knees, but they're not coming to touch the mat, and sending the hips back towards the heels as we then lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. And this is where we're going to commence and begin our mandala flow, our circular flow. Inviting in the thought of perception here. And when you're ready, on your breath, your next breath, coming to extend the right leg behind you for three-legged dog. And coming towards about hip height with the leg, maybe the foot is flexed or pointed. And then bending that knee. And bringing the knee towards the chest, stepping that foot through. If it gets about halfway, using the right hand to help you. We're on the back toes here, so we're in a low lunge, as if we was about to start running somewhere. And then when you're ready, when you feel firm down through both feet, coming up to right, finding your crescent lunge. And the hands might be above your head. Or maybe they're to heart centre or maybe they're at cactus. Just taking any variation here. Maybe in your crescent lunge you want to play around with moving the feet around. Maybe that doesn't feel, the, your initial setup didn't feel as stable. And on your next breath, send in the hands up above the seat, up above the sky if the fingertips aren't up there already. And then we're coming to face the long edge of the mat, the long edge of the left mat. So what I'll guide you through is we're coming into goddess pose. So this back foot, your left foot, the toes are going to turn out. So we're spiraling that back foot down to begin with, as if we was coming through a warrior two variation. And then we're spiraling these front toes towards the left, the right corner of the mat, sorry. And then as we come to face that long edge, you can turn the toes out. So both toes are turning out to both corners. So we're in a kind of like squat stance, so this is called goddess pose. And once again, bring the feet in a bit more narrow, take them out a little bit wider, just finding whatever variation suits you. And within goddess pose, we bring the arms up to cactus. Finding our breath here, finding our depth, our range, our edge. And when you're ready, we're coming to turn the, to face the back of the mat now. So we're turning onto that front foot so the toes are facing the front, the back edge of the mat. And as we come to turn round, that back foot, which was the front foot, is now coming into that crescent lunge. So we're back into a crescent lunge, but facing the back of the mat now. I'm taking a breath here. Taking any hand variation that's calling to you. And then on your next breath, coming to frame that left foot we're stepping the left foot back to meet the right foot and we're going through that round of flow. So we're going through sun salutation A. So knees come down towards the mat, untucking the toes, lowering the chest and the body down to the mat. Extending the legs long, hands up beside the body. On your next breath, coming to lift the head, lift the chest. Maybe you float the hands. And then coming to find the forehead, chest back down towards the mat, pushing up through tabletop, lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Coming to find the breath. And then when you're ready on your next breath, extending that right leg behind you to a three-legged dog, finding that sense of engagement by the pointing or flexing the right foot, and then bringing the knee towards the chest, towards the nose as we step that foot forward if you need a helping hand. Bring the uh, right hand in to help bring the foot forward a bit. Finding that sense of grounding through the right foot, the left toes. We're kicking that back heel up towards the ceiling. 
energetically as we come up to rise for crescent lunge. Coming to find your breath. And then coming to send the hands up towards the ceiling if they're not already there. We're coming to turn those left toes towards the corner of the mat. Then we're turning the right toes towards the other corner of the mat, finding that goddess pose on the right edge of the mat. The right long edge of the mat. Finding your goddess arms. Cactus in the hands. And then bringing the attention into that left leg. We're turning the toes to face the top of the mat. We're turning the body back round, coming onto the back toes for crescent lunge. Lovely work. Coming to then frame that left foot. We're then stepping the left foot back to meet the right foot. And you can either come in to find a child's pose, maybe sit over the tops of the thighs, or if you want to take that round of flow, coming to find that round of flow. It's coming through your baby cobra, tabletop to up dog. And then when we're all ready, we're going to meet back in a tabletop. Going to tuck the toes, take the hands, a handprint ahead of the shoulders, lifting your hips up and back for downward facing dog. So we're coming to find our mandala pose, but now on the left side. So we're going to start going around the left, the, sorry, the, the opposite side of the mat that we just went to. So when you're ready, coming to extend the left leg up and back for three-legged dog. Coming to bring the knee towards the chest, stepping that foot forward, giving it a helping hand if needed. Giving a nice generous bend in that back knee to energetically send that heel up towards the ceiling, firming down through the feet before coming to rise for your crescent lunge. Taking any hand variation and changing the position, once again, maybe taking the stance more narrow or more wide, just finding what helps you to find your stability and balance here. And then if the hands aren't up towards the ceiling, sending them back up. And we're coming to face that right edge of the mat. So we're turning the body towards the right edge of the mat, the right toes are facing the back corner, and then the left toes are facing the front corner. So we're finding our goddess squat. Finding your depth here, your range, and taking the hands out maybe into cactus. And then sending the hands back up towards the ceiling, where they're turning towards the back of the mat. So the right toes are facing the back of the mat, and we're back in our crescent lunge. And coming to frame that right foot, stepping the right foot back to meet the left foot, coming to place the knees down towards the mat, untucking the toes, lowering the body down towards the mat. Coming to extend the legs long, firming down through the tops of the feet, and then on your next breath, coming up, lifting the head, lifting the chest, baby cobra. And then coming back down, thumbing down through the hands, pushing up, finding your way into tabletop, tucking the toes and lifting your hips up and back. Finding your downward facing dog. And then on your next breath, coming to extend that left leg again. So coming to find your three legged dog. Bending the knee, coming to bring the knee towards the chest, stepping that foot forward. Really grounding down through both feet, finding that energy through both legs before coming to find your crescent lunge. And taking a round of breath here. And then on your next breath, so we're spiraling that back foot down, turning the toes out to face the corner. And then we're turning the toes out for the left foot to face the other corner of the mat, coming to find your goddess squat. So we're sending the knees out energetically also. And then maybe bringing the hands to heart center or into cactus, finding your depth in this range. Maybe you want to come up a little bit or maybe you want to come a bit deeper. 
then on your next breath, sending the hands up towards the ceiling. We're turning the body to face the front of the mat. So the right toes are facing the right edge of the mat, right top of the mat, sorry. <laughs> and we're on the back toes in crescent lunge. And then coming to frame the right foot, stepping the right foot back to meet the left and either finding that round of flow. So coming down to the mat, baby cobra into up dog, sorry, into um, tabletop down dog. Or finding a child's pose or a moment over the tops of the thighs. And just coming to notice how that flow has changed the rhythm in your body. How it's changed the temperature. How maybe it's changed the breath. And just bringing awareness to the body. And more awareness we bring to the body sometimes the more that we can bring it back into its natural rhythm, its natural state. So by bringing awareness to the breath, we can calm and soothe the breath a lot quicker than if we wasn't being aware of the breath. And then if you've taken that moment, coming to open up the eyes. And then we're going to find our way onto our backs onto the mat, coming to find the legs extended out long, arms beside the body, and just taking a tiny little mini shavasana here, just for one moment. I'm going to take three rounds of breath here. transitioning into bridge pose. So for your bridge pose, you might like to take an active bridge pose or you might like to take a more passive version. If you want a more passive version, just having a prop, so maybe a pillow or a bolster or block close by. So we're coming to bend the knees. Feet are planted on the mat. And placing the hands beside the body, maybe the palms are facing down. And then bringing some awareness into the hips, into the heels. And maybe we scoop the hips a little bit closer towards the heels. And if that doesn't feel right, going back to where your natural position was, your natural starting posture that you first came into. And then starting to bring some awareness into the pelvis. So just taking some little tilts backwards and forwards. And finding what feels comfortable for you and then coming to find a pause there. And then on your next breath, we're going to lift the hips up towards the ceiling, really engaging down, firming down through those feet, engaging the glutes, squeezing the glutes, and bringing some awareness into the thighs. We don't necessarily want the knees collapsing out towards the side. We want them not necessarily touching either, but energetically drawing in so we're finding that inner thigh strength here. Lowering back down towards the mat, lowering the hips back down. And we're gonna do that one more time. So the next option is either to come up into bridge pose and stay there in a more active version for two to three rounds of breath or however many breaths you want to do today. Or then the next option is to come up into your bridge and maybe placing a prop underneath you, finding something a bit more passive, allowing the hips, the sacrum to come down onto that prop. And staying here for two to three rounds of breath. Or once again, however many, however many breaths according to you. And then when you feel ready, if you've come onto a prop, coming to remove that prop, lowering the hips back down. And if you're still in your bridge, which is probably quite a long time for an active one, but coming to find the hips back down towards the mat. 
Just taking a moment, maybe taking the feet out a little bit wide, as wide as the edges of the mat and allowing the knees to knock in together here. Found in a restorative pose. And then on your next breath, we're going to send the legs up towards the ceiling for waterfall pose. And we're going to send the arms up as well if you want to, or they can stay beside the body. We're allowing the knees and the elbows to be relaxed, the ankles and the wrists to be relaxed. And if you find that they're feeling a little bit rigid, a bit tense, maybe take some little wiggles and jiggles out through the legs, side to side, backwards and forwards. And the same with the arms. Just kind of moving out through those muscles, through the fascia, before coming to find a little bit more of a relaxed version. Allowing the arms and legs to be heavy in mid-air for your version of waterfall. And with waterfall pose, there is also the option, if you wanted the hips a little bit elevated, you could have that prop underneath the hips, underneath the sacrum, one more time before coming to allow the arms and legs to come back up again into waterfall. I quite enjoy this variation. And then the hips propped up. And we're just going to be here for another two to three rounds of breath, if that serves you. And always feel free to take any movements if it's calling to the body. It's your body's way of asking you. So if the ankles need a bit of extra movement, or maybe the wrists, just honouring that, honouring your body. And then our next breath, coming to bring the arms down, the legs down, removing any props if you took that option. And then allowing the legs to stretch out long, the arms to stretch out beside the body nice and long. Coming to find your final resting pose, your Shavasana pose. And we're taking a moment here to set up. So we're allowing the legs to be out, rolling out heavy towards the side. The shoulders are rolling out, the arms, the hands are rolling out, being heavy. Maybe you tuck the shoulder blades underneath the back a little bit, or maybe you pull them out. Same with the hips, maybe you give them a little bit of movement, removing any fleshy parts from underneath that might feel uncomfortable. And then coming to maybe close down the eyes or take a soft gaze. And if Shavasana today is not good for you, not right working for you on your back, coming to find a seat. Well, you can always bring the legs up the wall for an extended variation of waterfall pose like we were just doing. And then coming to find stillness when you feel ready, if you've not done so already. Coming down to allow the body to feel the ground beneath it the points that connect to the mat underneath you. Or maybe that's the heel of the foot. Maybe it's a certain part of the back of the legs. Maybe it's the glutes. Or the upper back or the arms. Or maybe it's the back of the head. And bringing in this thought of heaviness, allowing the body to feel somewhat relaxed after all of that hard work that you've just moved through in your class today. And we'll be here for one to two minutes and I'll guide you out when we're finished. Shavasana.
So we start to bring the awareness back into the body, back into this space. And we start to bring some awareness to some noises that might be in the room, maybe there's a humming of a fridge or a car outside, maybe outside of the room. And then start to bring some movement, just very subtle, gentle movements into the fingers, into the toes. Extending that movement maybe into the wrists, into the ankles. And allowing the legs to come together, the hands go above the head. Taking a nice full body stretch here. And then coming to roll over to one side. And coming to find around a breath or two here. And before coming up to rise to find a seat. Maintaining that closed gaze or soft gaze as we do so. And maintaining that internalness. And maybe bringing the hands to the knees, maybe palms face up or down, or maybe the hands are at heart centre where palms are meeting. And taking a slight bow towards the chest, lowering the chin down ever so slightly. And taking a moment for yourself here to acknowledge your practice here today. To acknowledge your efforts, your explorations. And deepest gratitude to each of you. Namaste. And thank you for your practice here today, guys. Wishing you the best day. Bye.